operation, what I did is I contacted the police chief. Um, I did that um, on Monday morning, explained to him I was having a press conference. My understanding of talking to the chief is beginning Monday, yesterday, he put all his officers, uh, whatever he had to do, on alert. Um, we also contacted the GBI. I also touched base with... Folks, this is the prosecuting attorney uh, who spent the last hour setting up what we all knew was coming, that they were letting the police officers go who shot innocent Reinhardt Books who just was found drunk at a Wendy's uh, restaurant parking area uh, uh, free. And uh, if you remember that, action led to the burning down of the very Wendy's where the incident happened, excuse me here. And um, so now, no, just months before, just 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 months before the election this is released and so what he is explaining right now what he's asking answering excuse me is the question is the city prepared for the demonstrations and riots to come let's continue hearing this for a moment last night and my understanding is um uh, and also, I also touch base with an officer that is deployed to Homeland Security. So you're in, so the answer to your question is yes, they are they are prepared. I have one more about getting What would you say to the critics who may suggest that Black Lives don't matter? What would you say to to them based on this decision? I, I, I would say that's a that's a good question, and I, and I will tell you that the, the Black Lives do matter. Um, I've spent my entire career representing black victims of crime. And I will tell them that I understand that the encounters between police and the African uh, American community at times are very volatile. But I will ask them to look at the facts of this case. And this isn't one of those cases. Um, I do understand there has to be an outreach between law enforcement and the African American community. And I encourage that, that outreach to continue. Um, but this isn't one of those cases. This is a case in which the officers were willing to give Mr. Brooks every benefit of the doubt. And, you know, unfortunately, by his actions, this is what happened. Just as you mentioned a lot of different parties, the two that you correct me if I'm wrong that I did agree really mention were the officers themselves and their lawyers. Did you contact them today before this? Were they aware of this decision? Any reaction from them? The only thing they were aware of is that 1.30 I would be making a, uh, I would make, be making an announcement and that I would send them a copy of the press release after the end of this press conference. Just following up on that real quick, the Office of the Logistics, with your decision here today as a special prosecutor, does that formally drop the charges in Fulton County? Thank you for that question. We, uh, we are going to file a... Uh, and an administrative dismissal. Every county is a little bit different. We did it differently in my former circuit where I was DA. But here in Fulton County, we're going to file what, it, not here, I'm in Clayton County, but in Fulton County, an administrative dismissal in which we will be dismissing all the warrants. Well, Tom, this took almost two, two, why did it take almost two and a half years for this uh, investigation? That's a great question, and let me let me point out that the investigation was complete in September of 2020. Um, the reason it took so long to get to this point was we were not appointed until a little bit over a year ago in July of 2021. And once we got the case, obviously we reviewed the case, hired the hired uh, Mr. Porter, went through the case file got any additional information we could, for example, APD policies we had to ask. And then part of the delay in this case was getting the information to our, it was, first of all, finding the experts we wanted to use. So we, we, we looked at a, a number of different experts, um, even had, I even had my staff go to a conference to uh, observe experts to see which ones would be best to do this case. And so part of the delay was simply getting the expert report back, which we got back just a few weeks ago.
Mr. Stamalakis, do you believe that the first district attorney here, Paul Howard, overreached or did a disservice to this case by charging the way he did? I understand the question, but I will tell you that we were asked to look at whether or not this case should be prosecuted. Uh, the actions of Mr. Paul Howard need to be judged by individuals, given the, the, all the circumstances. Um, I, I, I'm not going to comment on, on Mr. Howard. I, I will say that um, the analysis that our experts brought to the table, reaction time of officers, um, what officers know at the time, frame-by-frame uh, -frame video analysis, things of that nature were very important to our decision-making, particularly when you get into the frame-by-frame -frame breakdown of what occurred. Because when you look at this video in, 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 full, in, in its entirety, in full motion, excuse me, when you look at it at its regular speed taken from the vehicle, um, things happen quickly. The first time I saw this video, I did not even notice how Brooks got the taser away from Brosnan, nor did I notice the, the drive stuns to the neck or the shot to the hand. Didn't even notice that. And then I went back and read the file. Um, it was only after we got uh, Mr. Albin's breakdown, frame by frame, that we were really able to look at everything. So, so part of an investigation like this is being sure that you have all the information available. I'll also point out that I, and I know, and I, I have to address it this way, there was uh, uh, at, a, at the press conference Mr. Howard had, he points out that uh, uh, the one... I'm going to freeze it right here, folks, just to upload this video at about 6.50 mark. Subscribe to Zenny62, bookmark Oakland News, now blog.com, and we'll have more on this. That ends this one.